Hello, welcome back to A Boring Revolution, your number one news source for everything in regards to The Boring Company. And I thought I'd do a nice little episode today in regards to the updated Boring Company website. A fantastic update, gives us a bit more information in regards to what The Boring Company is likely to do over the next sort of uh, three to five years and maybe into the future. So some very interesting things are in there, a lot of things that we expected, some things that were on the previous website. So let's have a look and see what we have. So, opening statement. So basically the same as it was previously. To solve the problem of soul destroying traffic, roads must go 3D, which means either flying cars or tunnels. Unlike flying cars, tunnels are weatherproof, out of sight, and won't fall on your head. So la 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 la, created by Elon Musk, founder of Tesla, SpaceX, and the Boring Company. The most important addition, I believe it's an addition, I don't actually have the original copy, but I cannot remember them mentioning, mentioning freight before. Freight tunnels. So that is a very good sign. Because if in the future Elon Musk wants to compete directly with Jeff Bezos of Amazon, potentially there might be opportunities for freight tunnels or maybe using the existing tunnels as freight tunnels. Who knows? But it's good to see they're opening up opportunities into different markets other than just pure transportation. Here's a nice picture of our tunnel at Hawthorne with the tarmac road. Benefits of tunneling include unlimited capacity. There is no practical limit to how many layers of tunnels can be built, so any current or future capacity outcome can be achieved. So Elon Musk has talked in the past about getting, you know, maybe up to 57,000 people per tunnel, or per passengers per tunnel. So even in the most uh, pessimistic of scenarios, we could be getting 20,000 passengers per tunnel per hour. If you've got multiple tunnels, you could easily get that up to, you know, one, two, maybe even three million passengers per hour if you really, really wanted to build an extremely big system. Uh, minimal land use tunnels minimize the use of valuable surface land. Tunnels also do not conflict with current operational transportation systems such as roads and sidewalks. Uh, minimal surface impact tunnel construction and operation do not create any discernible surface noise or vibration. Tunnel construction and operation are invisible, silent, and undetectable, which is great. Far less disruption than a railway line or road or even a monorail. Weatherproof operation, as I've said before, they have very minimal uh, impact of any kind of adverse weather, heavy rain. Maybe a, a, a bit of flooding if they are constructed in an area that is very low lying, but other than that, in most towns and cities, zero impact of the weather. Flexible architecture can support different types of transportation, public, moving sidewalks. Uh, I like the idea of moving sidewalks. Uh, they don't mention uh, uh, cyclists here, but definitely they could integrate uh, cycle lanes inside of tunnels. Future expansion, for the reason listed above, it is much simpler to extend a tunnel-based system than a surface-based system because it is 3D. You can go up and down, left and right. Here's the key picture. So this looks like proof rock. Most importantly, proof rock is mounted on this cradle here. I think, I can't quite see what that is at the back of the machine. I think that might be the uh, uh, the thrust, thrust frame, as it were, the thrust frame, which is, is jacked off of the thrust frame down into the excavation. But there's been a key change here and the key change is that the phrase line storm has disappeared. And the reason being, they didn't quite get up to line storm capabilities with their current machine at Las Vegas. And they were kind of in between what Godot was achieving and what line storm was proposed to achieve. So what they did is they called that machine Godot, uh, Godot, sorry, my apologies, Godot uh, Plus. So what kind of tunnel boring machines does the boring company have? Uh, TBC has iterated throughout three generations of TBMs, Godot, off-the-shelf TBM, Godot Plus, 50% faster, and Proof Rock, which is the picture we've just looked at. Each TBM was developed to further increase tunneling speed and reduce tunneling cost. Proof Rock has been designed to launch directly from the surface and will achieve speeds of more than 10 times faster than Godot. Oh, God. Yeah, Godot. How fast are TBMs? 
Standard TPMs typically dig one mile in eight to 12 weeks, which is it's not too bad, but it can be massively improved upon, which is approximately 14 times slower than a garden snail. Proofwalk has initially been designed to tunnel greater than one mile per week. If you've seen my tweet about this, this is incredible. It's uh, well over 200 meters per day, well over 200 meters, with the longer term goal of tunneling at one tenth the speed of humans walking speed, which is seven miles per day. Do I think seven miles per day is possible? Oof, I am not sure. I think if I was going to really put my neck out there and, and put a number on it, I think 600 meters per day is the absolute maximum limit any TBM can achieve. 600 meters per day. Uh, so achieving seven miles per day is a long shot, but great to see they've got a big target there. Here's our tunnel at Las Vegas. How are we increasing tunneling speeds? Proofwalk our third generation TBM has incorporated the following designs. Uh, surface launch and porpoising. I assume that's how you say it, porpoising. I've never heard that phrase before. I looked it up. I could not find any other um, engineers using the phrase porpoising. So I'm guessing it is a phrase that the Boeing company has uh, developed itself. This uh, porpoising has been used in the past uh, by a, a group called the Obashi Group, who use a system called Europe, or Ultra Rapid Underpass System, and it's very, very similar. So they launch the TBM, TBM directly from the surface, eliminates the need to excavate a TBM launch pit, which is expensive and slow. Instead, Proofwalk arrives on a truck tilts down and is mining within 48 hours. So to build a launch shaft and to drop a TBM there and get it assembled and ready is gonna be at least two weeks, probably near three weeks. So in doing that, they have saved themselves a ton of time. They saved themselves essentially maybe up to 19 days. Pore poisoning allows the TBM to emerge at grade without necessitating the excavation of an expensive TBM retrieval pit, or reception shaft as I like to call it. Continuous mining, installing the tunnel precast segments simultaneously uh, with mining eliminates the need to stop the TBM every five feet. So uh, those are, I suspect, are hexagonal concrete segments, which will be installed in groups of three as the machine is thrusting forward, then three are installed as it's thrusting forward, and then another three are installed, and they use uh, different thrust cylinders to push the machine forward as they're using the different sets of three hexagonal segments. Tripling the TBM's power, tripling the power output with appropriate updates in the cooling system. So that's been talked before in the previous uh, website. Eliminating rail. Here is the big improvement. This is potentially game changing. I like the phrase eliminating rail because I know it's going to annoy a certain person that is very critical of the Boeing company. The fact that we're eliminating uh, all rail carriages and railway underground is perfect for me. Utilizing rubber wheeled segment trucks instead of traditional rail based locomotives. This eliminates the time consuming rail installation and maintenance along with certain safety hazards such as derails. Now, I presume they're gonna use these rubber wheeled uh, uh, trucks to also remove spoil from the excavation. It'll be interesting to see how exactly they do this. Here we are. Here's our rubber wheeled um, trucks. Look very big, look big wheels those, and they, I'm pretty confident they can carry multiple uh, carriages as it were with our segments. Here's our example of uh, pore poising. I've seen a very, very similar picture uh, um, for the Europe method, ultra rapid underpass system. How are the Boeing company reducing the cost of tunneling? Again, mostly the same as the original website, but I might as well cover it just to sort of recap. 
The Boring Company is reducing tunnelling costs to below 10 million per mile through a number of improvements and innovations, including. So currently we are around 7.7 .7 million per mile, and I suspect that will go below 5 million per mile at some point in the future. Vertical integration, producing TBMs, electric construction vehicles, and the tunnels, precast concrete uh, linings in house. So just like Tesla, just like SpaceX, everything is vertically integrated when possible. Reducing and standardize, standardizing the tunnel diameter. Reducing the tunnel diameter to 12 foot. Now, I can't remember if on the original website they talked about the internal diameter as 12 foot, or is this the external diameter is 12 foot? I'm presuming that it's the uh, internal diameter because a concrete segment is around 16 inches in thickness. So 12 foot and a bit sounds about right. 30 to 60% reduction related to standard transportation tunnel diameters. Maintaining the same tunnel diameter for all projects in order to avoid reinventing the wheel each time the Boeing company designs a project and construction process. Repurposing dirt, so that's making our bricks. Our bricks are very important because they reduce the cost of the tunnel by at least 20% if we can manufacture them en masse. Designing and using all electric tunneling equipment, so fully 100% electric, no diesel. Uh, constructing the tunnel using all electric tunneling equipment, including an all electric segment liner truck. So that's interesting. Formerly an all electric locomotive, resulting in a cleaner tunnel with a simpler ventilation requirement due to the lack of diesel fumes. So the less diesel we use, the better, absolutely. Okay, so that's essentially what is being said on the website. Lots and lots of positive things in the, the company's heading in the right direction. We also got a few pictures of Las Vegas and how things are going to be designed in the future. So this is a, a beautiful render of the uh, Station 3 near to the new part of the conference center. So this should start to look like this in real life in the next sort of six to ten weeks. Um ramps uh, they currently uh, the form works in for all these ramps here as we speak right now this very minute and they're going to be pouring concrete in the next uh, couple of days i imagine uh, maybe the the start of next week possibly here's our tbm so hopefully i'll get a good look at that when i go and have a look here's our second ramp which is again being uh, uh, cast on site as we speak and our station canopy here looks like solar looks very nice lots of vehicles here here is uh, what is essentially a micro station. So you have this kind of lay by here and then you can go up and, and down. It also probably doubles up as an emergency uh, uh, escape shaft as well, which is quite useful and a ventilation shaft as well, because you know obviously uh, this is open air, which is great. So that's interesting to see that. I can imagine that these will be positioned at regular intervals throughout the system. And uh, for safety and ventilation, they are in, absolutely imperative to the running of the, uh, the Boeing Company's system in Las Vegas and other places. Here is our underground station at Station 2 in Las Vegas. Looks fantastic. I love the design. What have I noticed about this? Um, so you can actually see the sheet piling here. They've not tried to disguise it. I assume they would try and cover this up, maybe clad it with bricks or something. But essentially what they've done is just just, uh, just painted it, which is, uh, which is great. I think it looks good. Uh, that's my own personal opinion. You might disagree. As you can see here, we have our departure um, board. So if you see these here, 1 to 6, 6 7 to 10. I don't know if that is bays 7 to 10. I assume that's what it is. So that is bay 7, 8, 9, 10. And then you'll have 2, 3, 4, 5. And then maybe another one here that we can't quite see. And then another one there. That's great. Great stuff. Okay. That is the main update. I hope you enjoyed all that. And uh, as always, a pleasure. A pleasure helping you all learn a bit more about the Boeing Company and how it's progressing because the progress is really, really accelerating and it will continue to accelerate over the next uh, 12 to uh, 
18 months. Real big time uh, progress on various jobs, including the dugout loop and uh, uh, the San Jose uh, airport to train station loop, which I'm going to be talking about in a future video. Thank you all for joining me. And remember, don't be boring. Please like and subscribe to the video and consider joining us on Discord and Twitter. Thank you very much. And I will see you on the next one. And if you've not already done so, please consider watching uh, my, my interview that I did with uh, Warren Redlick um, on his channel. And I'll put the links in the description below. Thank you, everyone. And I'll see you on the next one. Thank you.